one minute sir the next presentation is by sumana biswas she will be presenting changing representation of women in contemporary partition fiction a study of chitra banerji divya karuni's independence so uh, just a, a slight intervention for all these uh, you know papers that are being presented so i request dana uh, to kindly chair the session and moderate as well right so thank you so much okay yes i will have to open the program in parallel so please um, or maybe akashar can assist and tell me um, the order of the speakers so we will yes. invite uh, Definitely, uh, ma'am. Definitely, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, so we will invite the next speaker with the announced topic. Uh, please, please put the microphone on. So, ma'am, you are in mute, ma'am. Oh, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, really, yes, sorry. Yes. Yes. Now, yes. Now. You are, ma'am. yeah yes good uh, good afternoon good afternoon everyone uh, i am dr shomana viswas uh, i am uh, currently teaching uh, in uh, kk das college a uh, department of english uh, and the cal university of uh, calcutta and uh, i am uh, presenting my paper as as already um, the title has been uh, read out that changing representation of women in a contemporary partition fiction and i have chosen uh, for my study uh, chitra banerjee devakarani's very recent novel 2022 uh, publication uh, the novel named independence so a uh, partition uh, of india as we all know is the founding trauma which accompanied the independence of the country from british rule in the year 1947 and uh, uh, it uh, it is well it's uh, well established that the nationalist narratives about independence celebrate the freedom from the subordination of british rule but they suppress the plight of the people that resulted from the partition partition did not only mean the division of the land it meant the division of the people and the nation the two nations which were formed changed the notion of home for a, in an instant for a, a, a thousands of people and uh, this led to disruption of normal life which led uh, to growing tension recording and, stopped uh, led to uh, the partition riots and um, uh, i'll come to uh, the 1990s uh, which saw um, and uh, the suppression of the human voice uh in the nationalist narratives saw the uh, let's say urgency or the need to record uh testimonies of survivors of the riots and that is where where the 1990s this particular decade is of uh, importance and specifically the year 1998 which witnessed the publication of uh, the testimonies in ubershi botalia's work the other side of silence and ritu menon and kamla hasan's work borders and boundaries in these works we see that uh, they focus on the plight of women um uh, as they were the ones who suffered not only at the hands of um the people from other communities but also at the hands of the members of their own families and um, uh, in an article which was published in the wire on 15th august 2021 titled gendered violence and the horrors of partition the price paid by women um and i quote from the article that kamla basan and ritu menon in their book borders and boundaries revealed that the official number of the women who were abducted uh, while on their way to pakistan stands at 50000 while 33000 women were abducted as they attempted to migrate to india and uh, in the other, other book over she would batalia provided similar statistics and claimed that 75000 women were abducted from both sides of the border and however it may be presumed that the actual numbers may vary as many incidents might have gone unreported unquote so in cases of the works of botalia uh, ritu menon and kamla hasan um, they focus on uh, the atrocities faced by the women as they were the worst sufferers in the riots they were looked and women uh, have always been looked upon as the bearers of honor and respectability not only of the family but by extension of their of their entire community or religion and thus the women were raped mutilated abducted their body parts branded with religious slogans and uh, suprita paul kumar in her book on uh, narrating partition has commented in this uh, regard and i quote 
It is well known how control over women's sexuality is perpetuated through male protection of the community's honor, which is of course inscribed on the bodies of women, unquote. And what is worse is that the women were killed by their own male family members or they committed had to uh, commit suicide in order to save their quote unquote honor the family members went on to valorize their death and justify their uh, death by saying that they uh, had did so for the honor of the family so the body uh, of the women became the site of uh, the struggle uh, for uh, power uh, the women chose to kill themselves and they were even hailed as martyrs for that matter. And the rehabilitation program, which was conducted by the governments of both the newly formed countries, which focused on returning the women who were uh, taken away uh, from their families or abducted. Um, but the result of the rehabilitation program was not quite fruitful because many a times the women were not accepted back by their own families because they were considered as quote unquote impure uh, because of their proximity with the members of uh, the men from the other community. And apart from these testimonies, we all are aware that there are various uh, writers of partition fiction uh, who have uh, depicted the plight of the women. And why am I uh, focusing on um, the, the representation of women, because I want to come to Divakarani with a background of what kind of representation of women we have seen in earlier writings. So uh, I would like to give the examples of uh, Sadat Hasan Manto's short stories, Thanda Ghosh, um, uh, or uh, let's say Koldo. So Thanda Ghosh talks about, or Cold Meat, if you translate it, uh, it, it talks about a narrative of a, a man named Ishwar Singh. Uh, who uh, is shown in the story as not uh, being able to make love to his partner or lover, Kalwan. And later it is discovered that uh, this inability of physical proximity results uh, from uh, a particular uh, incident. And the incident is quite shocking that he was involved in the um, murder of a particular Muslim family during the partition riot. <laughs> Uh, pardon, uh, is there any problem? No, uh, no I, I don't continue? think so. Uh, yeah, please continue. I may request the other participants to kindly mute themselves while the presenter is presenting. It, uh, so it's a, it creates a disturbance. Thank you so much. Please continue, madam. Yes, yes, madam. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Right. So, uh, and uh, the incident is uh, such that uh, when he uh, he had abducted a girl from that particular family and attempted to rape the girl, uh, um, unknowing of the fact that she was already dead. And this depicts the manner in which the women in at that particular point they were looked upon as objects of that uh, gratification of sexual lust and mainly not even spared even in death. And another story, another hard hitting story is cold or open it, where you also see a, a, a young girl named Sakina uh, who suffers uh, at the hands of uh, the uh, Muslim uh, uh, rioters and people from her own community. Um, they uh, go on a search operation to find her, but later on end up raping her. And the psychological trauma that results uh, in Sakina is depicted uh, in the story. We have other examples like Rajinder Singh Vedi's uh, Lajwanti, where she's not accepted by her husband after she's rescued through the rehabilitation program. We have Amrita Pritam's novel, Pinja, which depicts the plight of a girl named Puro, who is abducted by a man named Rashid, who once again is not uh, accepted back by her family. Uh, then we have uh, Jyoti Moi Devi's uh, Epar Ganga, Opar Ganga, translated as the river churning, which also depicts a girl named Sutara, who is a victim of uh, um, uh, sexual violence. Dapsi Sidwa's Ice Candy Man and uh, uh, Shona Singh Baldwin's novel, What the Body Remembers. So all these novels depict the way in which women have been a victim of uh, gendered violence and the way they have been mutilated, raped, abducted, and in many uh, uh, cases, uh, how the uh, let's say nationalist politics almost the body of the women becomes the site of uh, the battle for uh, uh, power 
and uh, I move on to the novel that I have chosen uh, for analysis in my paper. And uh, uh, the, this novel is interesting because this is a very recent novel, as I said, 2022 publication. And uh, this in this novel, uh, uh, Chitra Banerjee Divakarini, she uh, presents uh, the characters, the women characters, as not as victims at the hands of the men, but rather uh, we see them uh, as uh, not as victims, but as makers of their own destiny. We, uh, the novel traces the journey of three sisters, Deepa, Jamini, and Priya, in the background of the independence and the partition of India. Novel starts in a fictional village called Ranipur in colonial Bengal, and the struggles of the three sisters uh, are paralleled with the struggle for India's independence. And Devakarani has interestingly named each of the chapters of the novel uh, by the names of the three sisters. And it signifies that they are in fact the heroines of the story around which the narrative revolves. Um, and the three sisters are the daughters of a doctor named Nabokumar Ganguly, who, who has dedicated his life to the service of the poor and is killed in the communal riots, uh, which take place on direct action day, uh, while he was trying to help out a victim of uh, the riot um, uh, stricken area uh, in Park Circus. Uh, Nabokumar is mostly fond of his youngest daughter Priya, who also shares his passion uh, for helping the poor and aspires to become a doctor. Though Nabokumar loves expanding his doctor's horizon, I quote, he loved expanding his daughter's horizon. He was not too keen on sending uh, Priya to the medical school, as uh, he thought that there were too many prejudices against women. So Nabokumar is not only shown as a dedicated doctor, but also as someone who was involved in the nonviolent uh, movement of Gandhiji. His daughter Priya inherits his love for the country and has a keen interest also in politics. Priya undergoes a lot of hardships, but never gives up on her dream of becoming a doctor, which she ultimately fulfills with the help of her uh, father's friend, uh, Somna Chaudhary, Zamindar of the village. And, um, so we see that uh, Priya, at a particular point after her father's death, she says, and I quote from the novel, take care of them, you say to me, Baba, I made a promise, I must keep it. Stand on my own feet like the women you admired, Matungini Hajra, Sarojini Naidu. Carry the flag of my independence. It is what you would have wanted for me. It is what I want for myself, unquote. So Priya does not want a man to so solve her problems and is adamant to continue the legacy of her father. And we see by the end of the novel, she has established herself as a doctor and establishes quite a lucrative practice, but does not give up on the philanthropic work that her father did. Devakarini also presents the other two sisters, the other sister, the elder sister of uh, eldest daughter um, uh, of Nabokumar Ganguly, Deepa, uh, who is shown to be the most practical one out of the three. But then she ends up uh, falling in love with Raza, uh, a Muslim league, league enthusiast, and who is the nephew of Nabokumar's friend and partner in running his Calcutta clinic, whose name is Abdullah. So Deepa has to change her name to Alia Begum to survive and marry Raza after being disowned by her mother when she comes to know that she has uh, been in a relationship with a Muslim man. Raza takes up an important bureaucratic position in East Pakistan and migrates with his uh, family, migrates with Deepa, where uh, she gives birth to their daughter. And uh, that with the turn of events, it happens that Deepa, um, uh, that Raza al also uh, dies in, uh, in a conspiracy. And Deepa calls for help from India, from her sisters, and in a sort of a very... Um, uh, um, uh, now wracking rescue operation, we find uh, uh, Priya, uh, Jamini, uh, both the sisters, along with Amit, the, daughter, uh, the son of the Zamindar, they go on a rescue operation to rescue Deepa from the clutches of uh, the, uh, the, the people in uh, East uh, Pakistan. So Diva um, also shows, uh, by the end of the novel, Deepa taking ch charge of Somnath's estate in the absence of uh, his uh, son, Amit. So Diva depicts the women taking charge of situations, and Deepa, like Priya, loses the love of her life. And interestingly, uh, all the prominent male characters, starting from Nabokumar to Amit to uh, um, uh, Raza, all of them perish in the novel. Amit dies while trying to rescue uh, Jamini. 
um, uh, uh, sorry, rescue Deepa uh, in uh, East Pakistan. Uh, Nabakumar dies in a communal uh, uh, riot uh, in the Park Circus area of Calcutta. And Raza dies as a result of a conspiracy uh, that he uh, falls uh, into the trap of. And uh, finally, the only daughter who's left, Jamini, she's also shown, uh, though she's the most subservient and the least appreciated out of the three, da three daughters, uh, she possesses the talent of singing and is depicted as a practical person who helps her family survive in tough times. Jamini shares the talent of her mother, Bina, in stitching and helps Bina in creating complicated designs on quilts. Uh, and they sell these quills to sellers in Calcutta, and they also earn a living through that. So all the three women characters, we, we see that all of them, they become self-sufficient by the end of the novel. So, and coincidentally, it is Jamini and Bima, Bina, sorry, uh, who become victims of the communal riots which take place in their village. Bina is seriously injured and Jamini is almost on the verge of getting raped when Amit, the, the, um, the uh, Zaminda's uh, son, arrives at the scene at, and saves them. So all the prominent male characters perish, uh, uh, but all the three sisters lose the men uh, in their lives, but they become stronger individuals in the process. All three sisters are depicted as self-sufficient women who do not require the protection of men. Even though Divakarini presents challenging situations, she never lets them become the victims of the situation and does not only portray them uh, as uh, surrendering to the situation. Priya is one who says, and I quote, refuses, uh, uh, to, she refuses to believe that a woman cannot have the joys of home and also a place in the world. It seems as if Divakaruni is redefining the idea of a joyous home where the women at the end of the novel are shown to be stable in their lives with each being self-sufficient. And as India gains independence, the three sisters also establish their lives on their own terms. Divakaruni brings the character of Sarojini Naidu alive in the novel. And uh, 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 I quote uh, 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 a few, uh, the dialogue given to Sarojini Naidu by Divakaruni and I, uh, this is what she says. Um, you are, uh, yes, I'm coming to the conclusion. You are a daughter of independence, the country's future. Women like you are the ones for whom we fought and died, the ones who will transform India. You must carry the flag forward. You may fall from time to time. We all did. What is important is to get up again, unquote. Thus, Divakaruni is a diasporic writer and a writer who has not experienced partition herself and is writing about the partition based on the knowledge she has received through history, testimonies and the first generation literature at her disposal. The temporal distance of the author and the event of partition allows the author to analyze the various ways in which partition has been depicted in previous works of fiction. Thus, a significant change can be noticed in Divakaruni's fiction as she does not restrict the depiction of women as sufferers of own gendered violence as found in earlier partition fiction. There is also a significant shift from looking at women's bodies as sites of honor and rather than looking at women as individuals who can face any hardship and come out victorious and even be the flag bearer of the future of the country. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your insightful presentation. Into the into this uh, novel and the issue of this partition, which I know is um, on the mind of many scholars as well as authors, and we do sympathize in Romania with such a topic because we do also share this uh, <clears throat> situation, and there are uh, effects in the economical, political, and of right. course at the personal level. Right. Right. So I will now very briefly invite if there is uh, any question uh, to please. Oh, thank you. Uh, congratulations on the presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, given the fact that the Vakaruni is a diasporic writer, and right. um, I was wondering whether you, ha you have perceived uh, differences between uh, the ways in which a diasporic writer uh, depicts these events as compared to a writer who hasn't experienced migration. It would be interesting for me if you have, uh, I don't know, noticed uh, any basic differences of perspectives. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, yes, obviously, uh, since uh, she's a diasporic writer, and uh, <laughs> very interestingly, uh, if we look at the 21st uh, century, most of the writers writing on partition are diasporic writers. We have, um, uh, let me give uh, some examples. I have mentioned, already mentioned, uh, Shona Singh Baldwin. She's uh, uh, writing uh, from Canada. Yes. We I have um, Amit Majmodar. She he has also published a novel called uh, Partitions in the year 2008. He is also a, a, a writer residing in Ohio, USA. So the mostly writers uh, writing about partition in the 21st century. That is the uh, let's say the second generation or the third generation of writers who have not experienced partition uh, firsthand. Uh, the writers whom I mentioned earlier in the beginning of my presentation, writers like Man. to writers like rajinder singh bedi um, bishan sani uh, kushwan singh all of them they are writers of the first generation who have experienced partition themselves first hand experience and now we are talking about a temporal both a temporal distance and a spatial mm -hmm. distance mm -hmm. temporal distance meaning years have passed they have uh, they and the generation who survived the partition they have also passed away only thing that is available to us is their voice recorded in the testimonies and we know the politics behind testimonies as well the recording of the voices and the silences and uh, the ways in which testimonies sometimes um let's say uh, rather than revealing maybe hide those uh, painful uh, episodes and butalia and menon and bhasin and the point that you were asking me the, the idea of uh, this migration as in whether there is a difference i feel obviously there is a difference because uh, uh these writers they are uh, they are working on received memory what i can call as post memory of the event and not the uh, first hand memory of the event so obviously there there will be uh, differences in their depiction and uh, they are much more what i would say they uh, they are writing about the partition uh, through their research and uh, through their and they are, they have to be very cautious about what they are writing so they uh, if you read the acknowledgments of these book they are very interesting the if you read the acknowledgement of baldwin of, of majmuda's book of ba chitra banerji divakarni's book all of them mention that you know they are indebted to butalia's work they are indebted to menon and bhasin's work because they have to be you know aware of what has come before them because they are writing about uh, a something that has been worked on uh, and that has been uh, accessed and uh, analyzed from various different angles but still still as uh, madam dana said that um, partition is still very much present in the minds mm -hmm. of uh, writers and people uh, in even even yeah. if 75 years have passed from the independence of the country and india still faces communal riots so how mm -hmm. can you forget uh, forget what started that in the country right thank you thank you ma'am thank, thank you and a very brief question is there yes, anyone yes. uh there in pakistan is there any person who tries to write their own perspective uh i can talk about one pakistani writer uh, soraya khan she has written a novel called five queens road uh, which presents uh -huh. uh, uh, the point of view of a hindu man who decides not to leave pakistan and come to um, india and how the, mm -hmm. he negotiates with uh, uh, his muslim neighbor and muslim friend mm -hmm. um, and that is that is one in interesting perspective from uh, a pakistani writer thank is you so much maybe maybe we we'll stay in touch about okay. this yeah yes Because yes of course because now we have to continue so uh, we will ask you about your email and we would be interested to find of out course. more of course okay yeah. Thank you very much uh, excellent paper I must say uh, like all the others but um, indeed it casts a, a new uh, a fresh uh, vision upon this uh, both painful and scholarly exciting subject which we deeply understand and agree with